Hello you lovely people and welcome. In this video I'll be doing a navigation ILS and autopilot demo in the Vertavia Short Sterling. So I'll be taking off from Scampton in this first part of the video and then going to the Gamston VOR and then up to Ottringham VOR. In the second part I will be doing an ILS approach into RAF Coningsby. So let's get into the cockpit and um, get things going. Right, so the first thing I'm going to need to do is zero out the altimeter, which should be routine. And then I'm going to come down to the autopilot section here. The selected altitude, uh, I'm going to crank that anti-clockwise one turn. This is so that when I activate the uh, altitude hold, I won't nose dive into the ground. So um, with that set, um, just need to get up in the air now. So what I'll do is I'll get into the air, settle the aircraft, get the um, autopilot on, and then we'll tune into our first VOR. So pull back on the stick, tow brakes on, accelerate, swivel up slowly, brakes off. Good. Switch on the main master switch and switch on the altitude hold. Wait for that to settle. It looks like we're set at 400 feet there. So I'm just going to turn that anti clockwise um, just a couple more times. Just get us a nice altitude. Right. Switch on our radios, we'll bring up the visibility. Now we're going to want to uh, tune into our first VOR, which is Gamston, which is 112.800. So bring that down, 800, switch. And you'll see that the uh, needle is turned there. Going to switch on the heading hold. I'm going to turn the heading bug onto that direction. Now just ignore the fact that that's not moving at the moment because it will turn. Now I've come to the conclusion that this uh, VOR type uh, needle bearing compass type thing is supposed to act like an ADF because we're not getting any cues on the beam uh, gauge there and we're not, not getting anything from the bottom of the Lawrence end indicator but we are getting DME, we're not that far away I'm not sure if these are set at uh, one nautical mile each uh, and this is half a nautical mile but um, I'll hazard a guess uh, and probably not, probably ten uh, fives, so probably 10 nautical miles away, possibly, maybe, not very clear in the manual. So we're just going to um, put our heading bug onto the arrow there, I'm just going to get rid of the radios, okay, and we're still climbing. Now what would normally happen with the Lawrence indicator although it seems to be working now actually uh, it should if we're on in line with the VOR that indicator line there should be central and the uh, beam gauge should show an X the 
needle should shift over showing an X to, to show that we're in line with where we're meant to be going but they don't seem to be indicating um, so it's just this arrow and the distance uh, marker on the uh, Lawrence indicator throttle back slightly and bring the RPMs down to 2500 steady speed ok we're not too far away now there's Gamston there starts to swing, we'll switch that over and then we'll head towards Ottringham. swung, Gamston's here somewhere, and now we will switch the frequency over. Ok, so we've got a new heading, quite a long way out, turn that heading bug onto the heading of Ottringham. Gamson down there. What I'll do now is I'll speed it up to Ottringham. Here comes the needle swing, so we're over the top of Ottringham now. Okay, so that's um, doing VOR to VOR using the uh, frequencies, uh, the radios, the uh, bearing compass here, and the Lawrence indicator. So, pretty simple navigation, not too difficult. 
So um, to disengage the autopilot, you can't just flick the altitude hold off. You actually have to switch off the master switch, and that will that will switch everything off, and you'll have freedom of movement again. So um, yeah, that's the uh, navigational part of it covered. We'll do the ILS approach into RAF Coningsby now. Okay, so we're heading towards the east coast. I know Coningsby's around off my nose there somewhere, uh, but I want to uh, find it using the Lawrence indicator, the beam gauge here, and also the uh, bearing compass here. So I'm going to tune in the um, ILS, which is all the ones one five switch. Let's see if we can pick anything up. I think we might be a little bit too far out at the moment. We'll start descending at the same time because we are rather high. Okay, and we've just picked up the uh, the signal. So the bearing compass is telling me it's in that direction. We're a little ways out, and we've got an active beam gauge there. Um, the Lawrence indicator is showing that we're on the right-hand side of the um, the localizer. So we'll just keep on track at the moment. See what happens if we go to the left side of the localizer. See if we can get these parts of the gauges to come to life. Nothing as of yet. In fact, I can see the end of the runway over there. was mistaken there slightly I think we are left we definitely are left side of the localizer so we're chasing it at the moment so this should come to the center this should form an X as we come to the center line go the Lawrence indicator is starting to shift as is the beam uh, gauge there as we turn on center line okay so the beam gauge and the Lawrence indicator is slightly out from one another I think it's which one do you trust Ok, 
Okay, so I would say the Lawrence indicator is the more accurate of the two. So that would be the one to go with. No glide slope, unfortunately. So you'd have to go with the DME part of the Lawrence indicator. Um, which is a shame. But then again, they didn't have glide slope back then anyway. So it would be interesting to try and get this thing down in bad weather. Definitely the Lawrence indicator. Below 130 knots. Landing lights out. Gear down. Final notch of flat. Just going to chase that Lawrence indicator all the way in, and also we can use the uh, the bearing compass as a good localizer indicator as well. As I said before, the uh, the beam gauge there seems to be a little out. indicator is actually pretty bang on And there we go, we're down. So that is the ILS approach um, using the three gauges in conjunction with one another. Um, Lauren's in, uh, the Lawrence indicator seems to be quite accurate, as is the heading uh, the bearing compass there. I would forget looking at that because it seems to be out. In comparison to the Lawrence indicator. So, with that, I hope that's helped. 
Um, and as always, take care and I'll catch you in the next one.